Today we're going to um, cover weighted means and we're going to learn how to figure out your grades. Um, you know everybody else does that percentage thing in your courses and so I'm going to show you how to figure out your grades and then that question, um, the questions at the um, end of the semester that I always get of what do I need on my final exam to make an A in the class? We don't have that problem as much in our class because ours is just based on points. But I know in your other classes, that's always like a mathematical, hmm, what do I need? Well, we're going to, I'm going to help you today try to figure out what do you need on those final exams. Then we're also going to look at our GPAs. How do we figure a GPA? How does that work? Uh, so we're talking weighted means today. Okay, um, so here's your bird today. We have a dot plot of some hourly wages. I don't know how well you can see that. Um, and we're just going to find the mean of it. So remind me, how do we find the mean? Remember that the mean is going to be somewhere, in the, the average, the mean is somewhere in the, in the middle. So we know that our answer has got to be somewhere between 8 and 16 because all of my values there are, um, you know, it's somewhere in the center, center, loosely of between 8 and 16. So whatever my answer is, it's going to be between 8 and 16. Good. We just add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of employees. I like that. So, so I could go 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8, plus 8, plus 8 because that's what this is, right? $8. I could just add all that up plus add all this up plus add all that up. Or there might be a simpler way other than going 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8. Instead, I could just count how many there are. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 8. Instead of going 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 12 times, how about we just do $8 times 12? Because there are 12 of them on there. So now I'm just going to multiply that to see if I were to add $8 12 times, what would I get? Well, I'd get 80 plus another 16 gives me 96. So there's 96 in there. Then here's, uh, if it's in between 8 and 9, that's got to be, um, how much would that be? <coughs> Halfway in between there would be at $8.50, so we're at $8.50, so that's another $8.50. There's just one of those. Here at my $9, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So $9, instead of adding nine plus nine plus nine plus nine, let's just multiply times six is 54. Move this over just a little bit so that when I add it in a minute. Good. Y'all are doing great. And then what about here? It's what? 950? So 950. There are two of those. So I'm just going to do 950 times 2. Which is what? 18. Double 9 to get 18. And then 250 cents makes a dollar. So I'm at 19. And then two tens, and one twelve, and one sixteen. By the way, looking at this dot plot, tell me about the shape of this distribution. What about the shape of this distribution? Think about where most of our data is over here at 8, and then we just have a few data points off here to the right. So tell me about the, um, tell me about that data. Uh, thanks, and, and Kara, I'm just going to go with yours, 225.50. I'm going to trust you, and everybody else can tell us if we're right or not. I like it. It's skewed right. So since it is skewed right, that tail is over here to the right, the 16 should be 
pulling that mean to the right, when we look at our data, we can kind of begin to decide what our mean should be, you know, what would make sense for that mean. Well, we know it would have to be bigger than eight because that's where our, um, our mode is and it's pulling it to the right. So it's going to be, you know, somewhere in this direction, maybe right around nine dollars or somewhere right in that area. So let's see if, if that's what we've got. So did the rest of y'all get this two two hundred twenty five dollars and fifty cents? Totally just trusting that sounds good. Now the question is, what am I dividing that by? I've added that all up, and what am I going to divide that by? Well, you told me earlier it was the number of employees. So good. So I'm just going to count how many employees, and remember each one of these dots represents an employee. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or I could do this. I could just add up. This was the number of employees. Add that up. So I got 13, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So there are 25 employees. So I'm just going to take this and divide. 225.50 and divide by 25. And again, I'm totally trusting Ann Kara that it is $9.02. Which makes sense, right? That makes sense that it would be pulling to the right just a little bit. So what did we just find? We found the average salary. Now nobody on here made $9.02. That was just on average. So what makes this a weighted mean? Well, notice that our $8 was weighted towards 12 people. It was more heavily weighted. There were more people that had um, a salary of eight. This is an example of a weighted mean. Now we could have just added up all our values and, and divided which is, you know, the formula that we we're giving, add them all up and divide by the number, number um, your total number in your sample or in your population. Um, but it was easier just to multiply. And this is exactly the idea for doing, finding our weighted means today, is we're just going to multiply by that weight. All right, let's do some grade examples. How are we feeling? Seems pretty all right. I mean, I feel like we've done this in the past, right? This is not something new. Y'all even had to read a dot plot in the, in the past and find the average or the mean. Now I'm just doing it with multiplication. So how does that relate to say something like um, our grades? Well, your grades typically in most classrooms are set up as a weighted average because they do things, they do things like um, ask you what's the, they tell you that it's worth a certain percent. So in other words, like Trevor's in some English class and in his English class, the syllabus says the essays are worth 30%. So what that means is if he got 100 on all of his essays, he could earn 30 points, a total of 30 points. <clears throat> or those, that grade that he makes on his essays counts um, 30 times. All right, the midterm is worth 20%. In other words, if he made 100 on the midterm, he would get 20 points towards the class. So, you know, if he made 100 on his essays and 100 on his midterm, he would have 50 points towards his class. Or you could think of the midterm grade counting 20 times. All right, then his poetry journal, poetry journal, is worth 10%. So, again, that's just 10 points. Whatever that grade is, it's worth 10 points. So, uh, our 
um, or it counts 10 times. So 10, um, so if you made 100, that would be 10 points towards this class. If you made 100, 100, 100, he'd have 50, 60 in the class. So then uh, his final exam is worth 40%. Again, if he made 100 on the final, then um, it would be worth 40 points. So that's 50, 60, plus um, 40 is 100. So if he, had, if he made 100 on everything, he would earn that 100 points in the class. Hey, Adam. So um, then he comes along and only he only gets part of those. So this, on the essay, he makes an 80. So this 30%, remember percent is always out of 100. So it's like that 80 is counting 30 times. So if you were finding the mean, maybe you could just add 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80 plus 80. You could add that up 30 times. That's what that 30% means, is that's going to count 30 of them. Um, the midterm, he made a 75 on. So again, that counts like 20 of those. You could add that up 20 different times. And on the poetry journal, he made an 85. And on his final exam, he made a 90. So now we want to find the grade in the class. So to find the weighted mean, all we do is just like we did over here, where we take the number of them times the amount. That's the same thing here. This one, 30% is like this um, 30 times. So I'm just going to take 30% and multiply it times the 80. And I could just multiply it times 30 and then at the end divide by the 100 points that were the total. So, you know, I said that this counts 30 times. Well, that would be out of 100 grades. You know, that would be 30 of them. That would be 20 of them. That would be 10 of them. That would be 40 of them. And it would be for a total of 100. Or I could just right now divide by the 30, you know, say, I mean, divide by the 100. I could just say, look, this is times 30 out of that 100. See how I'm dividing by the 100 here instead of waiting until the end to do it? Same thing here, that 20%. I'm, I'm waiting, to, I'm not waiting till the end to divide by 100. I'm go ahead and divide by 100 now. That's what that percent does. It just goes, it, it, we go ahead and we divide early on. We just multiply by that um, that uh, fraction, that percent. So let's do this multiplication here. Well, um, we're getting pretty good with percentages now, so maybe we don't even need the fraction. We could just multiply this by, you know, well, I know 10% of that is just 8. And then if you triple that, you get 24. So if we did this multiplication, we're just doing 8 times 3, and sure enough, that's just 24. Hey, Amani. Then here, 10% of this would be 7.5, right? You just move that decimal over. Double that, and you got 14, 15. 10% of this would be 8.5. Oh, well, that's all I need, 8.5. And 10% uh, of this one would be 9. Do that four times, and you've got 36. So we've already done the division. So now we just need to add it up. So, so basically, when we multiply by that percent, we're taking care of the division part early on. Now let's just add it. You got 9 plus 8 is 17. 18, 19, 20. Oh, no, no, no. 9 plus 8 is 17 plus 6 is um, 23. I think I did that right. By the way, with his 80 on his essays, he earned 24 points towards the class. If he hadn't done anything else, he would make a 24 in the class. With his 75 on his midterm, he earned 15 points towards the class. So, um, you know, he's, he's now at 39 points towards his class. With that 85, he earned 8.5 out of the 10 points possible. 
So that's how that percent works, is it tells you how many points you could earn. And then, you know, if I, if I don't turn in that poetry journal, then that means I lost 10 points. It means the highest grade I could make in the class is a 90. So those percentages really tell you something in those other classes. They tell you how many points that assignment is worth. Um, oh yeah, I lost the five in there. 0.5, and then I added 17 and six, 23, carrier two is four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that what y'all got? Oh, sorry, 8.5. All right, good, but y'all did it anyway, an 83.5. So each one of those just tells me the number of points. Let's do another one, and I'll do better about lining stuff up, and we'll see if y'all can just do it. I bet you can. By the way, our haiku for the day is each day a new dawn, each day a new dawn, yep, a new opportunity, a new opportunity, yep, to learn something new, to learn something new. Did y'all know that haikus have a pattern of 575? Five, five? There's your haiku for the day. Uh, every day, whether you're in school or not, is a new opportunity to learn something new. Learn something new every day. All right, let's do better this time. So let's take, um, I don't know, Heather here in sculpting. And let's uh, have um, Heather's tests be worth like 40%. And some class assignments. Um, that's right, Amani. That's exactly right. If you just multiply by the percent, because it's a fraction already you're dealing with, you don't have to divide at the end because you've already done the division. You've already taken care of that. Uh, your in-class assignments are, say, 20%. Or no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your semester project in sculpting. I don't know. That should be, seems like that would be a lot. How about 30%? And then your final exam is just 10%. Now let's see if that really adds up to be 100. So if they made 100 on all the tests, they'd get 40 points. 100 on all the in-class assignments is 20 points. 100 on the project is 30 points. And the final exam um, is 10 points. So now we're going to add up. So um, let's say Heather on her test makes uh, 78. And on her in-class assignments makes like a 92. And on her project makes a 93. And on the final exam makes an 80. And we want to know what is her grade in the class. Okay, well, if she had made 100 on the test, she would have 40 points. But she didn't get all of those points. She only got part of them. So we're just taking this and multiplying by that. That's all we're doing. So, you know, 10% of that would be 7.8. So 7.8 times 4, I'm just doing it times this 4, so I get 32, carry a 3, 28, 29, 30, 31. So it would have been 7.2, I mean 7.8 for 10%, just do that times 4. Hey, Courtney. So we, we're, um, again, all we're doing is uh, multiplying this percent, but when we're doing that percent, we're saying there are four, uh, 40 of these. So I could add 40, I mean 78, 40 times. Man, I don't want to do that. Instead, I'm just going to multiply it times that, um, times that 40%. Thanks, Mr. Simpson. That's right. Remember with percentages, to make it into a decimal, you just move it over two places. 
because it's out of 100. So I could write this. This is equal to, you know, 40% is equal to 40 out of 100, which is just equal to 0.4 or 4 tenths. You know, those go away and it just leaves me with 4 tenths. All right, 18.4, good. So, you know, if they didn't do anything on these tests, we would just add these two together. They'd have a 49.6 in the class. It's not enough to pass. Got to do a little bit more. So here on the project, well, 10% of that would be 9.3. Triple that, and you get 27.9. 80, um, an 80, well, 10% of that is just 8. You know, once I have that just eight there, if I want to line up my decimals to add, well, remember that behind all our numbers, I can add as many zeros as I want out there. So I can just put point zero to help me line them up better. So now six and nine is 15, carry one, nine, 10, 17, um, 1725, carrier 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, I think. Yay! So she made an 85.5 in the class. Let's see if that makes sense when we do this. Well, you know, she had these low A's and a low B and a low C, so it makes sense that it would average out to be about an 85.5. Okay, I'm gonna come back here to Trevor and his English, and um, Trevor wanted to know on the final, let's go back to Trevor, and let's say that Trevor did not know what he, he hadn't taken the final yet. Let me back this up. Let me rewrite this so it's a little neater. So we got the essays were 30%. The midterm was 20%. Your poetry journal is 10%. And your final exam is 40%. And he made an 80, a 75, and an 85. Okay, we'll do better this time. So we know thus far, because we're just multiplying those together, that he had 24 points, he had 15 points, and he had 8.5 points. All right, but here's the magic question that's always asked of me at the end of the semester. People, I agree. English class stinks. Although Mr. Simpson might disagree with me because, you know, his first master's was in, in English. So he seems to like English. Okay, so, um, and thank goodness it was too, by the way, because he's my writer. Um, so here, I want to know, this is a question that everybody comes to me and asks at the end of the semester. Ms. Simpson, in my English class, these are the grades I have so far. What do I need to make on my final exam? in order to make, you know, in order to pass the class. I'm just desperate to pass that class and be done with it. So, you know, I want to make a C. Pass, D's not good enough, I want to make a C in the class. So what do I need to make that C? So this is the question that's posed to me by everyone at the end of the semester. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Well, in order to make a C in the class, we want these guys to add up at the end to be 70. That's the grade that we want. By the way, just to help with that decimal thing, remember that we can put a decimal and zero below that. So when we add it up, you know, it becomes 70 like that. Okay, so we want this to add up to be 70, but I don't know what this grade is. He's missing right now. I want to find out what he is. Since he's that one that I want to find out, I'm going to call him. You know, you could call him, you could just put a box there if you wanted to. But let's call it X. And then we just take that percent, just like we did before, we took 
the percent and multiply it times the grade. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this percent and multiply it times the grade to get whatever this amount is over there. So I've got 40% times my X. Or like you said, it was 0.4 times my X. And I need these things to add up to be 70. Now I have to do some um, solving in order to find that out. So I need it to add up and equal 70. So I'm going to write it that way. I'm going to add those points up. I earned 24 points in essays. I earned 15 points in midterm. I earned 8.5 points in with my journal. I don't know this one and I want it to total 70. So if I add these three together, well, the 0.5, then this is 9 plus 8 gives me 17. Carry your 1. That's 3 plus that 1 makes 47. So if I add these three numbers, these three right here, give me 47.5. So right now in the class, I have 47 point, I have a 47.5. So if I didn't take the final at all, if I made a zero on the final, I would, I would have a 47.5. Now, I need to know what, what do I want, I need to know what, I, what do I need to make for that uh, grade. Well, now I'm going to solve this equation. So I'm trying to get x by itself. And we've done a little bit of solving in here. In order to get x by itself, I need to get rid of this. This needs to go away. I need to balance out my equation. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So if you subtract it here, subtract 47.5, subtract 47.5 from both sides, so I, need, I want 70 points. I'm taking away the points that I already have. I did give it away. So I'm taking away all the, uh, the points that I already have. So that I have 0.4x equals however much that is. Well, to get up to um, 50, I need two and a half more points to get up to 50, and then 60, 70. So I think it's 22.5, but you do your subtraction, see if I'm right. Oh, yay! So remember, when we're subtracting, I don't have any I don't have any pennies over here, or dimes over here, so I've got to go to my dollar bills, but there aren't any there. So I come here, and I say this um, becomes a 6, and I make it into 10s, I mean into 1s. So I steal a 10 and turn it into 10 1s. Then I can take one of those 1s and turn them into dimes. And then I just subtract. So I've got 10 minus 5 is 5, 9 minus 7 is 2, and 6 minus 4 is 2. Oh, maybe. Maybe, Zoe. So how do I get there? Now, this was multiplying 0.4x times that 22.5. How do I get to the, um, get this x by itself? Or what would I do to find out that final grade? Oh, a bunch of y'all are getting the same thing. So we divide now. You know, this is multiplication. I'm going to divide by that 0.4. Divide by the 0.4. Man, my board usage today is not great. So that becomes 1, and I'm left with the x. Now I'm dividing. Remember in the past, we've multiplied the top and the bottom by 10 to get rid of that decimal? So now I'm just doing some division. 4 goes into 25 times with 2 left over. 4 goes into 25, um, 
six times. Wait, I didn't get the same thing y'all did. Oh yeah, I did, okay. With one left over. Four goes into 10, two times with two left over. Four goes into 20, five times. So when I do that division, I end up with 56.25, 56.25. So they need to, so Trevor needs to make a 56.25 uh, on his final if he wants to make a C in the class. What would change if I wanted to make a B in the class? If I wanted to make a B, how would this change? There's only one little change that I make. What is it? Oh uh, yeah, we would just turn this into an 80 instead of a 70. And when we subtract it, we would be looking at an 80 instead of a 70. So that's the only difference with it. So whatever grade, if I want to make a 90 in the class, then I would just turn this into a 90 instead of a 70. So it just depends on what I want for my grade there. So let's look at Heather and her sculpting class. Again, let's pretend that she um, hasn't taken her final exam yet. She's done everything else, but she hasn't taken her final exam. And she wants to know, she's like, I need an A. I want an A in this class. Little sculpting class needs to raise my GPA, not lower it. So what am I going to do? What do I need in order to make an A in this class? So if she wants it to be an A, well, that means she needs, in most classes anyway, it's a 90. So now we're going to find out what does she need on this final exam to make that A. Again, I don't know what that is. Since it's not known, I'm going to put just the, an X there. And the way we're getting this value is we're multiplying our 10 times our x, or 10% times our x. So 0.1 times our x. I bet you can do this now that we've done it once. Our next step is to add these three values and find out what they are. Add those together to find out what they add to. Because what we're doing is we're saying this, the points I got for my tests, plus the points she got for the in-class assignments, plus the points she got for the project, plus whatever points she gets on the final, she wants it to add up to be 90. So what do these three add up to be? Well, 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 9 is 15, carry 1, 9, 10, 17, carry 1, 4, 5, 6, plus that 1, I think she has a 77.5 right now. Does that sound good? Oh yeah, good. All right, so she did not take the final, and she's already passed the class. But she's like, that's not good enough. I want an A. So what do I need to do to make an A in this class? So she has this many points. She wants that many points. We're going to find out how many more points does she need. So we're going to subtract this 77.5 to find out how many more points does she need. So, boink. oops, there's this nasty subtraction again. Okay, well that's 2.5 brings me up to 80, and another 10 brings me up to 90, so I think it's 12.5. Or you can do the, the um, subtraction again where you say, well, 10s turn into 1s, but then I just have 8 10s. Ones turn into dimes and do your subtraction that way. Don't lose your 0.1 times x. That became zero, so we're done with them. And then the last step, excellent guys. That, now what's the last step? Good, divide. Perfect. So we just divide by 0.1. 
And remember, when we're doing this division, when I have this fraction, if I multiply the top and the bottom of my fraction by 10, it'll move that decimal over one spot. So really, I'm just doing 125 over 1, which is just equal to 125. So she would have to make 125 on the um, exam in order to make an A in the class. Well, if the exam is only worth 100 points, she can't make an A in the class. We probably could have told that back up here because look right here at this 77.5. We knew she you know, had 77.5 um, points. Well, we knew the final exam was only worth 10 points. If you add that 10 points up to 77.5, the highest grade she could make if she made 100 on her exam, the highest grade she can make in the class is an 87.5. So we, we could have been able to look at that right then and gone, ah, oh, you blew your A back there with the low tests. So, oh well, let's see about a B. So if we wanted to find out for a B, we would just do the same thing, but turn that into an 80, and we could find out what it is that she wants in order to make a B. So that's okay. One grade won't hurt you. She probably learned some great sculpting. It's okay not to make the grade that you wanted in every class. It's okay. Just keep chugging. Just keep chugging. You can do it. Okay, so um, there are, I mean, sometimes things like coronavirus get in the way. It's okay. Life gets in the way sometimes. All right, so that's how we figure out our grades. And at the end of the semester, if you want to find out what you need to make on the final exam, that's exactly how you go about doing it. And just remember that this percent just means that it's out of 100. Um, you know, if, if we weighted each one of them, this one would be 30. That grade would count 30 times. And in the end, I'd have 100 of those. All right, let's talk GPA. GPA is another weighted mean. That's all it is, is a weighted mean. Okay, so I'm going to do your uh, talk about GPA. So if somebody says they have a 4.0, I have a 4.0. What does that mean? Maybe you've heard that before. But what does it mean to have a 4.0? It means you have all A's. That's exactly what it means. A 4.0 means you made all A's. You didn't make anything except A's. So that's what a 4.0 is is you made only A's all the way through. So what is a 3.0? If I have exactly a 3.0, then that means that that's how much a B is worth, or that's B's. If I make a B, it's 3.0. What about if I make a C then? If I made only C's, all C's all the way through, yeah, I have a 2.0. And you're right. If I'm mixing some things, then, you know, if I have some A's and some B's, well, then my GPA is going to be somewhere in the threes, three point something. It means I've got A's and B's in there. And then uh, if I have a two point something, that means I threw in some C's in there. And in order to get any D is worth one point, and then, we don't have E's, but then F's are zero points. You don't earn any points for those F's. <clears throat> so yeah, there's um, A's are four points, B's are three points, C's two, D's one, and F's are, are zero points. So when you, make, when you take a class and you um, make an A in the class, you get four points towards that class for every hour of the class. So like our particular stats class is worth um, six hours. So if you make an A in this class, you're earning a lot of points towards your GPA. If you make an A in this class, it can really help you because it's worth six hours. Of course, if you make an F in the class, it could really hurt your GPA because then for six hours, you're not doing well. So this, um, 
So each one of the hours then is worth that. Now let's just look at it. If this, is, this class is worth six hours, and you make an A in it, so I just told you they're worth four points for every hour. Well, six times four is 24. How do I get back to that four hours? I mean, the 4.0? Well, then you divide by the number of hours that you're taking to show that you made an A in there. So we're going to we're gonna do the same thing that we did before, where we're multiplying the number of uh, points it's worth, but this time we're multiplying it by the number of hours. It's weighted by the number of hours. And then at the end, we're going to divide by however many hours you took. So let's just play with it for a minute. Let's say you're taking um, this stats. So you've got statistics is a six hour class and you make an A. And then you're taking that dreaded English, so Brit Lib, which is a three hour class, and you make a B. And then maybe you're taking something like, along with those two classes, you're taking, I don't know, maybe somebody advised you poorly and you're taking A and P at the same time. So that's a four hour class. And because Miss uh, Simpson made you focus on her and not the, um, the A and P, you made a C in that class. Hey, that's pretty good. I'm kind of impressed. All right, so let's find out our GPA at the end of the semester then. If that's what our grades look like and the number of hours we're taking, then we can find out our GPA. Okay, so here we're just going to take the number of hours times the points. So that A is worth how many points? That's what, four points? So every time I see an A, I'm thinking four points. And then the B is three points. And the C is two points. Perfect. Now, I'm just going to multiply the number of hours times the points that I would have earned. So six hours times those four points is 24 points that I've earned. And then three hours times three points gives me nine points that I've earned. And four hours times two points is eight points that I've earned. So here we go. Now, now all I do is add it up just like before. I'm going to add up my uh, number of points that I've earned. So here I'm adding up this is 13 and 8 is 21. Carry 2. 2 and 2 makes 4, I think. Okay, so what do we divide by? Well, we divide by the number of hours that we've taken. So it's this many points per hour. So you can think of it 41 points per the hour. Well, I've got to divide by the hour for the hours, you know, it's points for the hours. So I got to take that 41 then and divide it by the total number of hours. So I'm going to add up however many hours I took. So seven plus six is 13 hours. So we put our points over our hours to find out how much per hour it is. So 41 divided by 13, and that's what I meant by it's not going to turn out pretty because 13 is not the most beautiful um, number to divide by. Well, I know 30, 13 goes in there three times. 
because 3 times 30, uh, 13 is 39, and then 40, 41, so with 2 left over. And then 13 is going to go into 20 one time with 7 left over. And now 13 is going to go in there so 5 times-ish with 5 left over. So maybe we've gone out far enough. So 3.153 things. So this is approximately 3.153. And we usually do um, uh, GPAs out two decimal places. So this is a 3.15. Or about 3.2, you know, somewhere right in there, 3.15, is my GPA there for the semester. Now, that's a low B, you know, if I think about it in terms of what is that, the grade, well, it's a low B, and it makes sense with this, because I made a B, which was three hours, and a C, which pulled that down, which would have pulled it down into the twos, but this six hour A pulled it back up into the B range. And there's a statistic that tells how we did for that semester. In that class, we made a B. One number that represents that entire class's worth of work. There's a statistic, that mean statistic. Let's try one more of those. So, on my transcript, maybe it says I have an A for 12 hours, a B for 22 hours, a C, I'm going to retire this black marker after today, a C for 14 hours, and no Ds, but an F for 2 hours. So if I look at my full transcript and I add up how many A's I made, I had 12 hours worth of A's. And B's, well, I had 22 hours with B's. And C's had 14 hours worth of C's. And F's had 2 hours worth of F's, worth of F. And I want to know what's my GPA. Well, all I do is take the weight of each one of them and multiply it times the um, number of those hours I have. So 4 times 12 is 48. 3 times um, 22 is 66. 2 times 14 is 28. And 0 times 2 is 0. You add up your points. So 14 and 8 is 14 and 8. Well, good, we match. 14 and 8. 14 and 8 um, is 22. Carrier 2, 6 and 6 is 12, 13, 14. Is that right, 142? Divide by the total number of hours. So you have to add up the total number of hours you've taken. So that's 4 and 4 is 8, 9, 10. Carrier 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 hours. So you take your points and divide by the hours, split that in half and you should have a, uh, wait that didn't make sense this time, um, how many times does it go in there, it goes in there twice, I'm not multiplying, I'm dividing, so twice with 42, so 420 is an 8. And then into 200 as a 4. I got 2.84. So a GPA is 2.84. You know in that high C range. So, you know, I made a bunch of uh, Bs, and then I had more on this end than I did on that end. So it pulled the 3.0 down a little bit. So just a little bit below that 3.0. Pretty good. All right, math made simple at Simpson Math. Thanks for watching.